Hello, wherever you are in this beautiful world, and welcome to more healthy news. Uh, on a previous episode, we spoke about uh, the immune system. We are speaking more about the immune system today, uh, and we spoke about a study which uh, tracked the uh, improvements in the common cold with the use of pignogenol, uh, which is a very strong antioxidant and very important in immune system function, or can help us with immune system function. So today is uh, today's part two. So I uh, just want to recap the conclusions of the previous, uh, the previous study and findings is that um, pycnogenol was helpful with patients with the earliest symptoms of a common cold. Uh, when added with vitamin C, it has a synergistic effect uh, for recovering from common cold faster. Most effective is the combination of pycnogenol with vitamin C plus zinc. So um, we are still in uh, cold and flu season, uh, but not only that, if uh, we're exposed to many different types of bugs uh, all the time and our immune system needs to stay nice and strong. And one thing we need to be aware of uh, during this COVID uh, pandemic is no one's really talking about the COVID virus continuing to mutate. So right at the moment, we're talking about, uh, everyone is talking about um, the vaccine and the vaccine is offered and uh, it's, uh, but what happens when the, and when the virus continues to mutate and uh, the large percentage of the population is vaccinated to the old uh, variants and it's continuing to, mu to mutate around the world and everyone starts flying around the world once again, what then happens? We go back to our immune system. Our immune system needs to be strong for whatever it comes across. So this is why it's very important um, that we need to keep a very, very strong immune system. Now, in these um, studies here, I'm just keeping it to the common cold. Um, we could pick out influenza, we could pick out other types of viruses, et cetera. Picking a common cold because it is the most, um, it is the most, um, the most uh, how do you say, it's the most, how do you say, it's the most virulent. So in other words, uh, the ability for its effect to uh, pass from person to person uh, and have its an effect on that person or the host is the highest. It's higher than influenza. It's actually even higher than COVID. Um, so a common cold, the virus is very well adapted to pass from person to person. So if we have a strong immune system. We're going to combat it, first of all. And, and obviously, we're going to uh, um, stop it from coming in. So, um, so this is part two of uh, healthy news and immune system. Um, and, uh, and in this study, um, what uh, it was tracked was um, uh, the rhinovirus or the common cold. Um, you know, and in uh, humans, uh, the common cold normally lasts four days. Now, it can go up to a maximum of 10 days. Now, that generally is in someone whose immune system isn't as strong as it should be, but generally four days. So uh, this study here was tracked from uh, for four days or over four days, which is the common uh, time frame. Um, so obviously on day zero, the symptoms would occur. This is when the study started where the pignogenol intake would have begun. Uh, and then on day one, there was evaluation, day two, re-evaluation, day three, another re-evaluation, and on day four, final evaluation. Now, the, uh, the evaluations were done on a, the eight common cold symptoms on the visual analog scale. So, so what it means is, no, number one, scratchy sore throat. So, um, you, know, um, you know, study a person one, uh, did you have scratchy sore throat? And on a scale of zero to 10, how bad was it? Uh, and they would log that down. Uh, two, sneezing, uh, uh, rhinorrhea or runny nose, nasal obstruction, malaise, cough, temperature, headache. These were the eight common cold symptoms that were actually scored by each participant in the study. Now, one of the things to notice is that there were two study groups in this, uh, in this study, one which consisted of 70 people with an average age of 32.2 years, and the controls were another group which did not take uh, anything or were giving something that, would, that mimicked pycnogenol, but wasn't it, were given seven, were, were, uh, 76 people. So really control is, you know, somebody in a, in a, in a study which may think that they're having, you know, the, the compound or the, whatever is being administered in the study, but they're actually not. Um, so 70 people in the uh, pycnogenol group and 76 people in the control group. So 146 people all up. And then the cold symptom scores uh, following day one in the control study, it started, they started at a, at a score of 7.2. Uh, remember that's a visual analog scale scores of 7.2 for symptoms. 
uh, and the uh, pycnogenol group started at 7.1. That's why you know, they're close. They basically should be pretty much the same, which they are. Um, and all the way at the end, after day four, um, though the control group had a, an average score of 4.9 on the symptom scores, whereas the pycnogenol group had an um, average score of three on those uh, scores. So a huge decrease in uh, symptoms which means that their immune system of the pycnogenol group was working better and faster and able to combat the common cold faster. Now, in the, con in the control group from, uh, from 7.2 to 4.9, it means that their immune systems were working too, just not as good. So there are uh, compounds, there is nutrition, there is things which can help the immune system, and that's what we actually want, and that's what we're looking at. So um, in this study, it also tracked and uh, logged that pignogenol showed that uh, there was a decrease for the need to use over-the-counter medication. So here we have, uh, as an example, uh, nasal drops reduced from 55-odd you know, percent to just over 30 percent, aspirin reduced from 30 percent to uh, about 15 percent, antihistamines, there was a reduction, aerosols, there was a reduction. So what this showed is this study logged um, over-the-counter medications used and the amount that had to be used by those in the, in the pignogenol group was less than the control group, which means that the symptoms were less, which means their immune system was taking care of the common cold better and quicker. So that's extraordinary. Now, complications are very important too because we don't want a common cold or influenza or anything like that going to a, um, you know, moving to a bacterial infection, which can be very, very dangerous. Um, so that, uh, so if we look on the left side of the graph, we have this disease extension or basically going over four days. Um, it was a 14% increase or disease extension or it lasted longer than four days in the control group, only 4% uh, of the pycnogenol group. Um, the tracheal extension, which means where the cold actually drops down into the trachea, which is the, which is the windpipe before the lungs, um, you know, that was high at 16% in the control group uh, and only just over 2% in the pycnogenol group. And the bronchial extension, the bronchi is where so we have the, the trachea, which is the windpipe, and then we have the bronchi where it branches off to the left and the right lung. So that then becomes the bronchi. We have two of those, one going to the left lung, one going to the right lung. Um, and the uh, extension in the control group was 6% moving down, actually getting as far down into the bronchi. Um, and under 2%, just over 1% um, of the um, pycnogenol group. So less complications, which means, once again, the immune system's working better and can combat even the common cold fast, which is fantastic. So this study really did highlight that um, pycnogenol can shorten the duration of the common cold, lessens cold symptoms, including runny nose, nasal obstruction, sore throat, sneezing, high temperature, cough, headache and general comfort. Uh, it decreases the need for over the use of counter medications and decreases the complications of the cold, uh, keeping it at shorter time frames, not allowing it to extend out and uh, definitely a less of a chance getting down into the lungs and, and uh, infecting with other things as well. So um, yeah, very successful. So this is what um, pycnogenol looks like. This is OPC, there's three types of um, um, antioxidants in OPC. So it looks like this, it's a powder. Yeah, these are not tablets because it's taken better in a powder form. Um, there is a lot of research on it. This has been researched for over 40 years. There's over 500 publications on it, um, 135 clinical studies, peer-reviewed studies. It's been studied for a long time, probably the most studied natural compound in the world. Um, it's been around for a long time. Its effects have been known for a long time, and it will be around for a long time to help with natural immunity, natural immune system. So it's absolutely fantastic. Other uh, effects that we actually do and we have tracked with regards to studies of pignogenol are that it supports healthy circulatory function as well. It also fights free radicals, supports collagen and hyaluronic acid. It modulates the inflammatory response. But we are just looking at the immune system today. Uh, we have a lot, of, lot more research uh, on those areas. And one of the things to keep in mind too is proper immune function is a matter of looking after other organ systems as well. So the immune system just doesn't sit on the side and just start working like an engine when you know, a bug comes into our body. We've got to remember that we're always trying to, there's, there's a, a, a fine balance of 
uh, viruses, bacteria on our skin, in our digestive system all the time. It's actually there to protect us and it's our immune system interacting with these uh, organisms that actually help us and protect us out in the environment. So the circulatory system is part of that. The digestive system is part of that. The nervous system is part of that. The reproductive system needs to be part of that. The respiratory system, the endocrine system, the lymphatic system, the muscular system and the skeletal system all work together in different ways to help different components of the immune system. So very, very important. So this is, um, so this is, um, this is it here. This is the OPCs. What I'll do is I'll just stop sharing now and just show, I'll just show how easy it is to actually take. So, so basically we, it, it comes like this. Um, what we do is we basically take off the cap. We put the cap pool, just like that. Inside the cup there. Very easy. And that's taken on an empty stomach too. Okay, so there we have mixing cup up to 60 mil. So one serve is one cup full up to 60 mil. So just up to the line there, give it a bit of a stir. There we go. Great. And it tastes good. And um, yeah, so um, generally, um, you know, it's, it puts a lot of people off if it doesn't taste uh, good, but you know, this tastes really good. So if you do want to try it, just, uh, just ask us in practice. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's, that's basically how it's taken. So look, I hope you enjoyed this part two uh, of um, um, healthy news, the immune system. Um, one of the things that we do want to get across is the importance of the immune system in general. A lot of people just now this time are thinking of um, COVID and they just want to, you know, they just want it to go away and they just want it to, um, you know, and, and not to bother us anymore. But the fact of the matter is, is um, in the world, um, COVID will mutate. There are other viruses, other bacteria, other pathogens that we have to be strong for. So this is not just a matter of, um, you know, let's just all get vaccinated and then move on with COVID because there's gonna be mutations of that type of virus. There's gonna be other viruses, there's gonna be other bacteria, there's gonna be other things that our immune system needs to be working and strong for. So um, it's definitely not going away. And the, the thing we need to be looking at more importantly is how our immune system is working and supporting it. And there's definitely the research and the understanding of what to do. So this is why we picked out the common cold today because it's one of the most, uh, you know, just really quickly, um, you know, you can, yeah, it's already been studied in many different ways. Um, so if you found this information uh, useful, please hit the like button. Uh, and also if you wanted to uh, be notified when we do upload any videos, uh, just subscribe to our YouTube channel and you can be notified of any new videos that actually come up. I'll leave a link below, uh, below this video where you can go, I'll leave it in the uh, comment section where you can go uh, and find some more information about what we spoke about. If you'd like some, to order um, some um, pycnogenol, you can in practice. You can come in and see us or you can order it online. I'll also uh, leave a link to uh, where we've got our, our secure website where orders can be put on there. And also there's all the ingredient lists, um, uh, research. Uh, there's huge research documents there if you want to go through and do some more research yourself. Uh, it's all there. You can't, you're welcome to contact me personally. I'm always available. You can contact any of our team at Adjusted Chiropractic too uh, if you have any questions or you want any more information. So have a great day, everybody. Make sure you look after yourself because nobody else will. Bye.